Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10. Closing out the book of Proverbs. Now, verse 1. Proverbs 31, 1. The words of King Lamel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Verse 10. This is not the Proverbs of Solomon. This is King Lamel, that his mother. His mother came up to him and said, Son, let me tell you about drinking alcohol and a king. Let me tell you about giving power to the woman. And now let me tell you about a virtuous woman. And I've heard people say, you know, Solomon. And it's not Solomon. And it says the prophecy that his mother taught him, the future reign of his kingdom and alcohol, possible future look into a wife, Prophecy's future. And it says the words of Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. And we're going to look at close of Proverbs verses 10 to 31 on the proper woman. From a mother to a king. Who can find a virtuous woman, pure, rare, wise? Her price is far above rubies. The world says diamonds. The diamonds is the world as a woman's best friend. The Bible says rubies. Get that. And then in the movie The Wizard of Oz, you know, there were the ruby slippers. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her. So she's trustworthy. She's honorable. And a woman that we see, particularly in the book, in the Bible, that matches this woman is the book of Ruth. He studied the Proverbs of the virtuous woman in the book of Ruth, and then they'll say, you know, when they mention Ruth, this would be Solomon writing about his great-great-grandmother. Solomon didn't write it. Verse 1. This man can trust his wife in all things, so that he shall have no need of spoil. And what, he, what it's saying is, you know what? The expression, a happy wife is a happy life. That's wrong. Because if a happy wife, a happy wife endures much into the income of her husband, it makes him not happy. And when a woman has much more needs than what the income of the house is, it's not happiness. And the virtuous woman is, you know what? It's not money, it's not fame, it's not diamonds. She may window shop, but she doesn't shop. She doesn't buy. And we're going to look at her through these verses that she's efficient. She's not after the riches of her husband. And this kind of husband would buy things for his wife because he wants to, not because she demands it. When you got a woman that demands, oh, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that, that's not a virtuous woman. When you have to take her out to eat most of the nights and she won't cook at home, as we'll see, that's not virtuality. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. So her living as a wife is for the good of her husband, which defiles feminism. Feminism says, conquer that husband. The Bible says for the woman, strengthen your husband. By the first aspect the Bible speaks of a woman, even before the woman the wife was, God said, let me make a help me. She is to help her husband. And the husband is not to put her down. 
I mean, she was made from the rib, not any of the bones of the foot. And her aim in life is to please God first. We'll see that. And to please her husband. She seeketh wool and flax. And worketh willingly, willingly, willingly. Paul says to the church in the Corinthians, he that is a cheerful giver. We're going to put you under tithe. We're going to go to Malachi. No, 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 no. Paul says to the Christian in the church, if you want to give to the Lord, give to the Lord what, what, you, what God's given to you. Give it cheerfully. Don't grudgingly give. And we see that same atmosphere of this woman. She goes to the store, buys wool. She buys flax. She's going to use her hand. She does it because I want to do it. I want to do it. I don't have to do it. I want to do it. I don't have to put money in the place. I want to put money in the place. Oh, the message is about tithing. I got to put money in it. No, 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 no. Oh, I got to make him another pair of pants. I've got to make him a, a suit. No, 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 no. I want to give money to the Lord. I want to help my husband. Willingly with her hands. She's like a merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. Grocery. There's grocery. She goes down to the store, she loads up the cart in the grocery store, puts it in bags, puts it in, in the car, comes home, and puts it away. There it is. She's a grocery shopper. A virtuous woman goes to the store and gets the groceries and comes home. All right, before you men, oh, yeah, go do your job, woman. And the Bible says, you know, as a man wipes the dish and turns it over, you want a Bible verse for a man doing the dishes? She rises also while it yet night. And I remember my mom and my grandma as a little boy growing up. I, unless my mom and my grandma were sick, and even still, mom and grandma would be always up before I got up. And grandma's house was that, that, that table in the kitchen was always set. Grandpa's coffee, he had instant coffee, would be all she had to do was pour the hot coffee in it. Grandpa had his pills laid out on the plate. We had our cereal bowl. Mom and Grandma were up before everybody was up. And breakfast was being made and I guarantee countless other chores. And giveth meat to her household. Friend, we got women today that don't even know how, where the kitchen is in the house. That's a shame. We got women today who don't know how to cook. We got women today, you want me to get up? That's not a virtuous woman. Oh, she's saved, she goes to church and all that, but what's it say? She giveth meat to her household and a portion to her mate. She takes care of everybody that's in the house, family, and hired. And as a husband, my first wife, Lisa, we would we would divide. The, I would cook sometimes and she would cook sometimes. When it came to Thanksgiving and all that. She made what she make her scalloped potatoes, and I would make the stuffing and, and dessert, and we worked together. She knew what the kitchen was. I had a wife. I'd go in the kitchen, make my lunch, and bring my lunch over here, and then she'd go up and go and make something. I go in the kitchen, I get a drink, a soda or something. I say, do you, do you want something? You want me to get you something? And she would say, no or yes. But when I got, that's not a virtuous woman. A virtuous woman cares for the family of her house. 
And when the virtuous woman cares about the family of her house, the, the family of her house is going to care for her if there's any respect. Now, Abel, uh, Abel uh, Abigail was a great woman and she married a loser. Nabal. And yet later on, God gave her a wonderful man, David. I don't know why David married other wives. He had Abigail. Abigail went and got raisins, got grapes, got wine, got stuff for David and his men. A woman's job, I'm sorry, is to go into the grocery store, get the things, get, get what is needed, and make the meals. A husband's job is to, to, to be over the wife, take care of the wife, help the wife. You know what? Let him take care of the bills. Let him worry about the bills. Let her not have to worry about do we have enough? That's the husband's job. She considers a field and buys it. Did you see that? The virtuous woman is not just a rag of muffin in the and that she is smart enough to. All right, what kind of dirt is there? What kind of buildings do I get? What kind of crops was grown here? What's the average rainfall? What 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 is usually planted? This woman is smart to say, considereth a field. She doesn't just walk. Okay, I like it. Buy it. She considereth. She looks at it. She studies it. A woman that goes and buys something because she wants it, because no regard on how much it costs. If it's too expensive, I just like it. Doesn't consider, well, maybe I can get it cheaper here. Maybe I can get a coupon. I was talking to a, a wife and a mother the other day, she, and she valued her coupon. Amen. Glory to God. My mom had coupons upon coupons upon coupons. My grandma had half as much. My first wife was into coupons. And knowledgeable enough to buy a field, real estate, and with the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. You know what she does? She gets a garden going. My husband likes tomatoes. I'm going to grow tomatoes. If my children like green beans. I'm going to grow green beans. Hey, you know, cucumbers are good for my family. I'm going to grow some cucumbers. You know, I like snap peas. I'm going to grow me some snap peas. Hey, wouldn't it be great if I had a couple rows of sweet corn for my family? You know, to have nice, fresh corn on the table with butter for all of us. I'm going to grow all that in the garden. There are people today, if all the grocery stores closed tomorrow, they would go to the store and buy a gun to get a corn on cob and go hunting for a corn on cob. You say, Stolly, you don't use a gun to go get corn on a cop. Correct. <laughs> I know you don't. And a lot of people don't even know that. She does what she can for her family. And not only should her, fam her husband and her children will see after praise her and, and help her and love her and strengthen her. I guarantee God strengthens and loves her and nourishes her. This is supposed to be the church, my friend. Paul says we're to be a chaste virgin. And yet many of the church, many of the bride of Jesus Christ today is out smooching with the devil and in bed with the world. And have no idea of the bread and the water and the wine of the Bible. And some people are going to say, what did he mean by that? It's sorry. She girdeth her loins in strength. So she has strength. She's not weak. And strength in her arms. Now I don't think she needs to go to the gym. But. If going to the gym will help her, and she can carry groceries, carry babies, plant, 
There's nothing wrong with that. I seen a couple weeks ago, it was Bikers Week. I came across there were three weightlifting women. Gross. Abs. There's nothing grosser in this world a woman weightlifter with all the muscles. That's gross. Now, if she would find time to go to the gym and not to work out to work out, but, you know, for her strength of her body and nourishment of her body and to do what she needs to do, I'm not against the gym. I know people in, in my church, they go to the gym. I avoid the gym. I shouldn't. And I'm... Uh, I am paying for the consequences of not keeping myself fit. She's keeping herself fit. She's not letting herself go. She's not dragging herself down. She's strengthening herself. And not only physical strength, but emotional strength. She is who she is. And depression and anxiety is not going to bring her down. Though Peter says she's the weaker vessel. The virtuous woman is not a weakling. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. She goes to the store. She looks at the label. She looks at the price. That can of peas is the same as the can of peas here. That one is five cents more than this one. I'm going to save the five cents. I'm going to get these peas. And all it is, is it's the store brand. It's the same P. Now, there are products, all right? I'm not pushing anything, but Scott's bathroom tissue lasts a lot longer than any other bathroom tissue, Scott. I would never get, uh, what is it, White Cloud, whatever, that, that, that fluffy toilet paper. That fluffy toilet paper, it does not last. It stays on the roll of the toilet paper holder one day. And the, the, the woman, the virtuous woman, look at that. You know what? That's a waste of money. And there were products that my mom, myself, and my grandmother and Lisa had. We bought the name brand products because they did what they were supposed to do. Simple Green. Simple Green is one of them products that you don't get store brand. And she knows that. And there are products you get, and you can get store brand. Store brand paper towels. And if you got pets, so you, know, you got to have certain pet food. You got to have the good baby food. And she understands that. She makes sure that the merchandise that she gets from the store is good, not expensive. She don't break her husband's wallet, so he had no need of spoil. If she can go to the store and get $15 sneakers, where over here they got $95 sneakers, she gets the $15 sneakers. And if I got to buy three pairs of $15 sneakers, I still save a lot of money in buying one pair of $85, or whatever I said for a price. She's knowledgeable. You're not going to find that in many women today. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you a big problem. Uh, this, this came to mind. Titus. Let's go to Titus. And this is the church's fault. Titus 2. Titus 2. Three. Titus 2 3. This is a church fault for young Christian women. We would rather have Christian women in the church go play games. Games of chance. And we're going to compete against other Christians. What about this? What about this? What about this? Titus 2 3. Let the aged woman likewise. That be that they be behavior as becoming holiness. 
That's a joke in churches today. Not false accusers. In other words, they don't gossip. Not given to much wine. Teacher of good things. That's lacking in the Christian women today. They're not teaching good things. Did you hear what Sally did? You know about that family over there? That they may teach the young women to be sober. Serious. To love their husband. You know what I mean? Christian women and his stupid husband of mine. I, had, I let him go make his own meal. I ain't going to do that for him. How dare you think me as a woman going to do that? My husband is an idiot. That's why the churches are ruined today. Keep it up. Keep it up, you devil woman. You're teaching those young women disrespect for their husbands. Contrary to the word of God. You don't like what I'm saying? It's out of the Bible. Look it up. To love their husband and to love their children. Those brats of mine. My worthless children. That is a shame. Lost or shame, lost or saved, a shame for a woman to badmouth her children and badmouth her husband. It is a evil, wicked. Dealing for a husband to badmouth his wife and badmouth his children. It is a sin against God to make jokes against marriage. You realize the first two things that God set up for Adam? He set Adam to go in the garden and do some work. And then he gave Adam a wife. Marriage. Don't you dare make jokes about marriage. You're going to answer at the judgment seat of Christ, wood, hay, or stubble. If you've got no regard for marriage to make jokes about a husband and wife, you're not following Titus chapter 2. He's getting angry. You better believe I get, I get angry at the jokes of marriage. There's two things I don't joke about. I don't joke about marriage, and I don't joke about the nation of Israel. You know what's seriously long in the churches today? The marriage. To discreet, chaste, pure. That's, that's the virtuous woman. Keepers at home. Ladies, stay home. You don't need to be at the casino. Listen, I come from Connecticut. There were two Indian casinos. And I've heard stories of grandmothers being at the casinos, being at bingo their entire life. You don't need to be at a casino. You need to be home. That's what the Bible said, right? Well, your Bible don't say that. You go out to the store, get a King James Bible and burn the one that doesn't say what, what I'm reading right now. Put the modern Bibles to the flames of hell and get yourself a King James Bible. That's another problem in the church. Obedient to their husbands. Oh, oh, you want me to obey him? Oh, so you're a Christian feminist. Oh well, no, yes you are. Yes you are. That the word of God be not blasphemed. I didn't go, I didn't want, this was not in my notes. This is the Holy Spirit. Uh, Ephesians chapter 21. Ephesians 5, 21. This was not in my notes. But this goes for the virtuous woman, which is not being taught in the churches today. We got our women's group. We got a men's group. We got the children acti activities. I come from Connecticut. I live in Florida now. You know what we did in Connecticut? I, I really love and I really appreciate Connecticut. When we went to church, dad, 
mom and the children by ages in the same pew in Connecticut, New England. It wasn't dad here, mom there, and the children over there. It was the family sitting together. You got a broken family, you know, the children here, the husband there, the wife there, you got a, that's because you got a broken church. That's one aspect of Connecticut, I believe, and what happens in New Englanders and their church service. The family is in the family pew. I sat in the same pew with my grandparents, my brother, my wife, me, and my son. The same pew. You move to the next pew when you got too many people in your family, you got to move to the next pew. And you put the children in front of you so you can whack them in the head when they don't behave. And that's happened in the church. I've seen it in the Connecticut church. I've seen the southern churches down here. Your failures. Ephesians, five. you don't like what I'm saying, then do it your way, have a broke up, have a, have a family split, have divorces, have all kinds of problems, because you're not adhering to the Bible. We got more, let's have contests, let's have, let's have games, let, uh, let's, let's compete with each other, rather let's work in together, let's unity and into the faith of God, to Jesus Christ. Ephesians 5.21 Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Well, who, who's, who's submitting yourself? Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. You treat that man like you would treat God. That's scripture. That's scripture. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, he is the Savior of the body. You want to see Jesus? You better see your husband. Or you better never say, I do. Don't you say, I do, if you're not going to give reverence and honor to your husband as you would to Jesus Christ. If he's not respectable, he's not good enough, don't you dare say, I do. That's the virtuous woman. Therefore, as a church subject to Christ, so let the wives be their own husbands in everything, including sex. Husbands, love your wives, not your boats, not your jobs, not another woman, not your toys, not the ball team, not the Republicans. Love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. I sat in the hospital room. My wife, Tracy, was, was diagnosed with, with kidney failure. You know what the first thing that came out of my mouth to the, to the kidney doctor? Doc, if she needs a kidney and I'm compatible, you take mine. Are you willing to lay your life down for that woman? Jesus Christ laid his life down for his church. You're not willing to lay your life down for that woman? Don't you say I do. Well, that better. I uh, can't stand her. Uh, you said I do. Through richer, through poor, through sickness and health, unless they don't even say that no more. They probably don't. Unto death do us part. And you're not holding a smoking gun. That's not the virtuous woman. Back to Proverbs. That was extra. I don't take offerings, so you don't pay for it. Now look at here. Uh, Proverbs 31, 18. She perceived that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. Are you ready for this one? Hun, I need batteries for the camera. Now I got them on the grocery list. Do we have any more milk that's on the grocery list? I'm going to get it tomorrow. Oh, I need some aspirin. We got aspirin. Her merchandise, her candle goeth not out by light. She's got the house supply and the house is never. I got, I got to get it tomorrow. 
She knows what's in her house, and she knows what she's got to get. And if she can't remember, she makes a list. That's Bible. Can't, are you following along with the King James Bible with me? I know all the men. Hey, honey, I got this video over here for this guy telling how to how to be a proper wife. Hey, why don't you be a proper husband? You're not going to get a proper wife if you're not going to be a proper husband. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold to the staff. That's a spinning wheel. That's sewing. She's a seamstress. She's a tailor. And look, look at uh, verse number 13 again. Wool and flag. She deals with the raw material. She wants to make a sweater. She gets wool. And she takes the wool and she makes it into the yarn and takes the yarn and makes it into the sweater. And when she goes and buys the wool, if she don't have her own sheet, she makes sure that her merchandise is good. Versus she makes sure she's got the greatest wool at the greatest price. That's a virtuous woman. She stretches out her hand to the poor. She's helping. She's needy. She's got her mind not on herself. She's got her mind on her husband. She's got her mind on her children. She's got her mind on her household. She's got her mind. That guy needs something. That family needs something. They need food. They need shoes. They need something. Let me help them. And she's smart enough to realize, are they truly, really poor? Or are they trying to con us? She reaches forth her hands to the needy. She's not stingy. She's not selfish. She's giving. She's loving. She, and to others. Now Proverbs 31, there's no Jesus Christ yet. He hasn't been born. They are not Christians in the Old Testament. But if the Proverbs 1 go to the Christian woman today, what that verse in 20 says would be, she's got the joy. The Christian woman today, she's got Jesus first, others next, and herself last. That's joy. She's not afraid of the snow of her household. For all her household are clothed with scarlet. They are properly clothed. I went to the store today to get my daughter a, a, a night outfit. All right, it's se no, September. It's November. I don't even know what month it is. And I wanted to get something. I, I was thinking of night shirts. I like the t-shirts. I don't know what I'm buying. I'm a single dad. And they had all of the winter stuff. I'm not looking for winter stuff. And this woman here, winter's coming. Before winter, I, I, my mom would be like uh, uh, August. It's the middle of summer. My mom would go up. We had we had the attic. She had bring all these boxes down. I'm like, Mom, what are you doing? Grandma, what are you doing? Well, we're taking all the winter clothes out. It's summer. We haven't got the fall yet. Make sure it fits. Make sure we got it what we have. Make sure we get what we need. And we don't have what we need. Well, you know, make sure you got gloves and hat ready. So when the snow comes, the gloves and the hat are in the drawer. She's prepared. She's like Florida in hurricane season. You make sure you got the first aid kit. You make sure you got extra gasoline. You got the flashlights for the battery, flashlights for the radio. You make sure you, air, you got the bottle of water. You got canned goods. You got a, a, a manual can opener. As a Florida prepares for a hurricane or as the Central, America, Central United States prepares for tornadoes, they got their boxes. They got their stuff. The wife, the mother of that family is prepared for the seasons that are coming. And it never happens in winter. Mom, I need my winter hat. Oh, I forgot about the winter hats. That's not the virtuous woman. And how many times as we Christians, me, we go out. Here's a great opportunity. 
I can get this person a gospel track. I left them home. I left the gospel tracks home. I have not been virtuous. I have been found at fault. My supplies have dwindled. I don't have no gospel tracks. I'm the bride of Jesus Christ, right? I'm all to be virtuous, right? In Jesus Christ. I'm to serve the Lord. I don't have gospel tracks on me. I failed. And then when my husband comes, Jesus comes. What about that? I didn't bring any. I, I, I didn't have any. Have you been upset? You, you go in the cupboard to get something and you don't have it? Whatever it is. You know that moment you're in the bathroom and you grab the toilet paper and you don't have enough on the roll. Friends, we ought not to be like that for Christians. We're talking about the virtuous woman. But what about Christians? We ought not to be like that for Christians. We ought to be ready and able to go and be prepared to go when we leave our house and in our house. The Bible says that the woman is to ask her husband questions. The woman to keep silent in the church, if she has anything, to ask, let her ask her husband at home. And the husband is prepared when the wife comes, i got a question. Okay, I'm ready. And yet there are Christians today. Where's your Bible? I don't know where my Bible. I don't know. Maybe it's in still in the car. But did I leave it at church? I don't know. Do I even have a Bible? Man, you want me to find Proverbs? I can't even find Genesis. Unprepared. And we are the bride of Jesus Christ. We are to be that virtuous woman. She's not afraid of the, of the season. She makes herself coverings of tapestry. She don't go buy it. She makes it. Her clothing is silk and purple. The best. So you see the husband has provided for her what she needs. And she takes you know, <coughs> what her husband provided for her. She takes what her husband is able to do. And she does what she can for that. Her husband is known in the gates. So this virtuous woman in 10 that is spoken about the mother of Lamela, she's already a wife. And she's given her husband, hey listen, I know this woman, she's married to this man, and the woman I'm talking about is not a fairy tale. She's not Cinderella. She's a real woman with a real husband and real children. Her husband is known in the gates. There's no make-believe in the Bible. Son, I'm telling you about a real woman. And you're the king, verse 1. Her husband's known in the gates. City Hall. That's where they met. In the gates. That's where they met in the gates in Ruth chapter 4. When he sitteth among the elders of the land. He's a judge. He's somebody of authority. She maketh fine linen. She maketh fine linen. She don't go buy it. She makes it. Boy, those days are past. You know, I grew up in the 70s. My mom in a sewing machine. Wow. Now, let me tell you about growing up in the 70s with my mom in a sewing machine. There would be fabric that goes on the couch in the chair. And then that fabric would be taken off on the couch and chair. She would make new fabric. And the, car and the fabric that was on the couch and the chair would be the curtains. And then a after she would make new curtains, take the, ca the fabric from the curtains, they would be my pants. She made use with everything she had and everything she had she made use. She didn't waste. I remember growing up, we didn't buy funnels. We used soda bottles or milk containers. The, the plastic milk, you cut off the top of it, that would be your funnel. And delivered girdles to her merchant. She is allowed to make things and sell them for profit in her house. She's a saleswoman. 
She sells girdle. And with the money she makes, she don't have her own little nest egg. She don't have her own little private bank account. It goes back in her house. She's making money with the spare time she has. She's not watching soapy dopey operas. She's not watching the big, the, the view with women who don't do nothing for a living and don't take care of their house. She's taking care of her house. She has no time for soap operas. She has no time for the view. She is doing for her household. She's making money for her household. She's able to make money for her household. She is a great blessing. My wife ought not to ever work. She is. She's selling girls. She delivers girdles onto the merchant to, to get money. Strength and honor are in her clothing. When she makes something and she sells something, her reputation stands by what she makes and what she makes she sells. That woman, when she brings the girdles, those are the best girdles. They don't wear out as the other girdles. We got the best value for those girdles. You want to buy girdles? You go to that woman. You know the man that sits at the gate? Yeah, Fred. You know Fred? You know his wife? You need girdles? You go to Fred's wife. She's got the greatest girdles. And she'll give you a good price and they'll last for a little while. You see her children? That's her children over there. Look how well they're dressed. Look how well they act. Look how they behave. That's Fred's children, his wife. Go see his wife. Strength and honor in her clone, and she rejoices in the time. To, she's happy. She's wonderful. She's, woohoo. I serve the Lord. I serve my, my husband. I serve my children. I, I serve the people in my house and, and other people. They like me. They know my character. I got a good reputation. Uh, I'm just so happy. I got the joy, joy, joy down deep in my heart. And the pastor's up at the pulpit. We haven't started singing yet. And look, she's over there singing. She's like, Pastor, I want to do a special in the church, in the church choir today. I want to get up and sing and rejoice to God. That's a virtuous woman. She's happy. She's joyful. You know what women are today? You know what the women coming from the broken churches are today? They're miserable. They're wretched. They're poor, and they're blind, and you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. Not this woman. She rejoices in the time to come. At the judgment seat of Christ, she's going to rejoice. She's going to have gold, silver, precious stones, crowns, inheritance. And she'll have some wood, hay, or stubble. We all will. And her husband is going to come up to her. And he's going to have a crown in his hand. And, he, and she's going to be kneeling down before him. And he's going to put that crown upon her head. She's going to rejoice. He's going to say, well done. I'm a virtuous woman. I'm the bride of Jesus Christ. This virtuous woman is to be a wife. She's to be a daughter. She's also to be a type of a Christian. There's not many Christians today, my friend. Many Christians today at the judgment seat of Christ, eh, 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 fire alarms, smoke detectors, eh, 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 all wood, all hay, all stubble is burning, there's smoke and ashes. And there's no gold, there's no silver, there's no precious stone. Shame! Shame on the church and the, and the non virtuous woman. She hasn't loved her husband, the Lord Jesus Christ. She opens her mouth with wisdom. That means she does not gab. She does not blab. She does not rumor. She does not gossip. She has her mouth. I got a recipe for that. Well, I'm telling you, if you got number three thread, that will take care of that. Well, if you go down to this store here, you can get three for a dollar. And here, I got a coupon for that. You can get it cheaper. Well, you know, if you boil that a little longer. This spray will take care of that. That's wisdom. Did you see last night's movie? Did you see what they talked about in the talk show? That's not wisdom. Well, those women on the view, that's not wisdom. 
That's nonsense. It's a bunch of women who need to get married, get right with God, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, get in the church, get in the Bible, and do right. And her tongue is the law of kindness. Honey, what do you want? Get away from me. I've had a busy day today. I don't want to hear it. That's not the virtuous woman. It's not all a Christian to be. You're a Catholic. Don't you know what's wrong with the Catholic Church? Why don't you know where to find Genesis? It's not our conduct. It's not our way. She looketh well to the ways of her household. That's how we ought to look for our church. I've got members in my church right now. They're suffering. And I'm suffering. There's one in church right now. And I, I know. And you're not going to stand. But last night I just it kept singing. I couldn't sleep. I'm praying on it. And deep and wide. Yeah, I know you're not going to understand, but God does. I want well for my brethren. I want them the best. When one has a toothache, I, I feel for because I've had toothache. Lord God, heal that toothache. Lord God, thank you the surgery went well. Lord God, help that family. Lord, he needs help. Lord, please help him. You know, the household, your church and your Christian brethren on Facebook. Oh. Are you in the Lord? Are those people on Facebook, are they in the Lord? Then that's your household. Do you hear what I said? I, the preachers preach against Facebook. Listen, I got I got household in, in, in Florida. I got household in Georgia. I got household in, in the United States. I got a household in China. I got a household in the island nations. I got a household in Europe. I got a household in South America. I got a household all over the world. Just because we're in Facebook land doesn't mean we're... Facebook land doesn't mean, you know, they're not all heathen. Matter of fact, you know, a lot of my Facebook friends have been more faithful and more praying for me and more than, than the churches I've been in. That's our household. We're going to look well. Listen, my videos, my teaching is to instruct you to be a better Christian. And if you're not a Christian, on how to be a Christian. I attack the things of the world. And I attack scholarship. I attack religion that you might know the truth. And eateth not the bread of idleness. There's your soap opera. There's your video games. There's your smartphones. If your phone is so, so smart, if your phone is so smart, why is your family breaking down? I heard today they got smart cars. Are they so smart they can put their own gas in it? And you ain't smart. She eats not the bread of idol. She eats bread. But she ain't wasting her time. Now listen. I, I, at the end of the night. When things are calmed down. Sit down with your wife. Or now we don't have a television. Never had. We got YouTube and we got videos. Sit down and say honey. What video you want to watch? What movie you want? What? I mean we can. Whatever program we can bring on YouTube. What do you want? Just hold hands and watch a good movie. Watch a good program. <clears throat> and if that movie, you know, there's tears and she's going to cry and it's really, it's gooey and gushy and it's, it's for female. Watch it with her. She deserves you to be by her side and watch that movie with her. Okay? You mean you can't give her two hours? You can't hold her hands while you're going off the bed, going to sleep. You can't cuddle with each other. But you can cuddle your bone, your, your bowling ball. You can cuddle your wretches to, 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 to fix the engine. You can cuddle those sports tickets, but you can't cuddle with the hand of your wife. No wonder she's your aggravation. You're aggravating her. 
Be not, be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man sow, that he shall also reap. If you're reaping bitterness and aggravation in your marriage, guess what you're going to get back? You ain't getting Cinderella and Snow White. You're going to get the evil, nasty queen, and you're going to get the evil, nasty witch, because that's what you put into your marriage. Listen, I've been married twice. I'm looking for a third marriage. I'm looking for a blessing. Marriages have been blessing to me. God honored marriages. I want another. I, I say to them, hey, I've been married twice. I, I, I don't want to be. I can't stand. Well, I feel pity for you. I feel pity for you. Marriage is a great blessing. When you got one of God's daughters. And as you are God's son, you treat that God daughter as God would treat you and how you want God to treat you. And God will treat you well. And God will treat her well. And she'll treat you well. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Now let me ask you something. Here's a hard question. What do your children say about you? Why? Get off in your prayer closet, get on your knees and say, God, what is the problem? Now, it could be your children. David had bad children. Samuel had bad children. Uh, uh, Eli had bad children. Adam and Eve had bad children. Okay? It's Time to get off in the prayer closet. Say, Lord, when you're alone, you got those those times of being alone. I do it. I, I, I am not preaching to the car. I do it. When I'm alone, I got more time now alone. I'll say, Lord, it's quiet. What am I doing that offends you? What am I doing that does not please you? And almost instantly, one of my Impatience. Right, I'll tell you that much. God says impatience. You know why you won't get off to God alone? You won't. You know why you won't say, God, what, what's the problem between you and me? Father, uh, how much of a bad child? Because you know where God will answer you. You know where God put his finger on you. You know what's wrong already. And either pride or you don't want to give it up. Her household also. That would be the church. And he praises her. Right, her children rise up blessed. Husband also. Her husband pray. Her husband does not say, oh, that sick woman that, that grows. And he said, that's a wonderful great wife I got. I am happy she's my wife. I never ever said any bitterness outside of marriage about either one of my wives. Never. Never told the faults to anybody outside the marriage. I always lifted up my wife. I always loved my wife. You put her down. You joke about her. You rank on her. You're only going to get it back in double of reaping and sowing. You think God honors that? God instituted, instituted the first man. Adam, go in the garden, do a job, and here's a help me, here's a wife. You think God appreciates joking about marriages? I don't think he does. The first miracle that Jesus did was at a marriage. Ooh, turn the water into wine. Let's make a joke about marriage. No, we don't. I don't. Many daughters have done virtuously. So there are not just one virtuous woman. There are many virtuous women. But thou excellest them all. There's one bride of Jesus Christ. One day at the, after, the, after the judgment seat of Christ, we're going to excel. But there'll be some members of the Bride of Christ that still will not have crowns. 
in the millennium, there will be members of the Bride of Christ that won't get an inheritance. Favor is deceitful. The bat in the eyelash. The flattery. We write about flattery. Oh, you're just so husky. You've got to be working out with weight. You gotta be the strongest man ever. You're just my hero. <laughs> and beauty is vain. Get rid of the oil valet and get rid of the the uh, uh, the Avon and the Miss Carol and all that. The most beautiful woman ever is a woman that loves the Lord. And loves her family. And you know what? She could be a widower. Or she could have been never married. And she loves the Lord. She's still beautiful. She's got that countenance about her. She loves the Lord. Beauty's skin deep until you fall into the fireplace. Beauty's not that valuable until you get in the car wreck. When they open up those... those those tombs of the Egyptians and they unwrap the mummies, they're not beautiful. Cleopatra is not beautiful no longer. If she was ever beautiful. You know what's beautiful to a man? A woman that loves the Lord and they love the Lord together. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised at the judgment seat of Christ by her husband, by her children. Verse 28. Give her the fruit of her hands. What kind of fruit are you going to get? You're going to get good fruit, Jesus said, or you're going to get evil fruit? Are you going to get wood, hay, or stubble? Or are you going to get gold, silver, and precious stone? What fruit are you going to get? God's not going to give you a trophy just to give you a trophy because everybody got a trophy. God's not in a high school. God don't work for the college. If you don't deserve that trophy, if you don't deserve that ribbon, you ain't getting it. You're going to get the fruit of your hands. And let her own works after salvation praise her in the gates there are 12 gates in New Jerusalem. And there will be, I know personally, there are people who are going to be in New Jerusalem because of the Lord having me to work the fields. I don't work to be saved. I work because I'm saved. There are people who are going to New Jerusalem because God used me and I gave myself to God. I'm going to have good fruit. I'm also going to have evil fruit. I'm going to have bad fruit. I mean, I'm not perfect. Look at this virtuous woman as a wife to be, as a wife should be, and look at to how you as a Christian should be to God. And then go over to Revelation chapter 3 and read about the Laodicean church age that is not like the virtuous woman. 